Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on whichever part of the world you are tuning in from. I'm very grateful for life and so excited to be with you here this morning as we are going to be taking another fresh new look at the financial market. But before we kickstart the session, let's run through our daily routine by confirming that we are good to go this morning. So if you can see my screen and you can hear my voice loud and clear, please confirm in the comment section by typing in hi. So typing in hi will make me confirm that we are all on the same page together and thank you very much as you do so. So I will be loading up my comment box and I do hope to see your feedbacks in the comment section. All right, all right. So I can see some couple of comments here. Um, I see your comment is my heel. Noah Suzanne, good morning to you. Thank you very much. Raimo Cha, good morning to you. Mr. Vane, good morning, thank you very much. Hello, Carrie, good morning to you. Thank you very much for confirming this. So it's on this note, I welcome you all to yet another promising edition of the Extra and Speed Live. My own name is Sheriff Daramola, and for the next one hour, I'm going to be your host. I will be taking you on a trading journey as we take a new look at the financial markets using simple parameters such as trend lines, key levels, and of course chart patterns to gain valuable insight into the historical price movement of these assets on our watch list. Well, since the beginning of this week, we have been monitoring four major financial assets, which includes the US All Spot. The US Tech 100, popularly known as the NASDAQ, the GBP USD, and of course the XAU USD, popularly known as the Gold Spot. And all of these assets has been doing pretty well right now in the last 20, 36, 48 hours, though the week has started on a sluggish note, but finally our patience paid off and price has beginning to move in our direction respectively so we are going to be looking at this in a moment and see how we are going to be managing our existing positions and of course see how to position ourselves strategically ahead of the new york session today for those who are joining us for the first time you're highly welcome on board i'm very excited to have you around with us this morning and you might be asking what is it that you're doing here well a quick reminder for those who are joining us for the first time we are technical traders and of course we gather here on a daily basis in anticipation of the new york session where we come to review our existing trading positions and see how we can also capitalize on potential trading opportunities during the new york session so this happens on a daily basis 10 a.m utc 11 a.m west african time as we come here um, to uh, prepare for the New York session. I encourage you to stay tuned in so you don't miss out on any of the valuable ideas we shall be deliberating on today and be part of our subsequent edition too as well. As the more time you spend with us, the better you get in understanding how we use our strategy in this community and of course be able to use the information you gather here to make your own independent trading decisions. So once again, you are welcome on board. Now, with that being said here, let's dive right into the business. And as usual, the first thing we normally do in this community is to check on the economic calendar. As we all know that these fundamental factors often manifest on the charts in technical patterns and price movement. By monitoring the economic calendar, we can identify potential correlations between key economic releases and specific technical patterns on the chart, hereby giving us valuable information needed to position ourselves strategically prior, during, and even 
after this economic event. So on the economic calendar, we usually focus on high impact event from the economies that affect the assets on our watch list. And for this week, based on the assets we are looking at, we will be focusing on the United States and the United Kingdom. Now, for today, Thursday, October 12th, we have a series of high-impact events. So I had to include some medium-impact events too, as there are some events that happen in the United Kingdom this morning that are categorized as medium-impact events. And I think uh, they, are, they are very important events that we also want to look at too as well. Now, the first event for today came in um, about six hours ago, that's from the um, United Kingdom's economy, and that is the GDP product for the month of month. And interestingly, we had an expansion of 0.2% as against the previous month, which came in at a woeful minus 0.6%, which is a very good um development in the united kingdom and for those who don't know how important the gdp is you see this data here provides us with an insight into the overall health of an economy hereby impacting investor sentiment and influencing trading decisions and with this positive data we are likely going to be seeing some traction however the industrial production and the manufacturing production data came in be below expectations in fact but it was a little bit higher than the previous month's figure which is a little bit giving us a mixed data here so what we are going to be doing this morning is to see how the market has reacted to this event and let's see how we can also capitalize on the next move that will be happening on the gbp usd so you don't want to miss out on that so stay tuned in then the next event here is coming in about an hour from now and that is the consumer price index from the United States economic docket. Now, for those who don't know what this CPI data is, well, this index is released by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, and it is a measure of price movement by the comparison between the retail prices of a representative shopping basket of goods and services. The CPI is a key indicator to measure inflation and changes in purchasing trends. Now, generally speaking, a high reading is considered as a positive signal for the U.S. economy, which in the long run will be affecting the U.S. dollar positively. Another important thing about this event is that the Fed will be looking forward to see what the data will be as whatever comes in here is going to be influencing the interest rate decision, the next interest rate decision. Now, if you look at the previous data here for the month on month, in the year on year, um, we can see that the consensus projections are a little bit lower than the previous month, which is a sign that there's going to be some contraction, which is not a positive expectations for the US dollar. So we're going to be looking forward to what the actual data is going to be on that one. Then simultaneously, the initial jobless claims is going to be published. And this is uh, an, a data released by the US Department of Labor as well. And it is a measure of the number of people filing first time claims for state unemployment insurances. In other words, it provides a measure of the strength in the US labor market. Now, in this case scenario, a, a decreasing number should be taken as positive for the US dollar, while a larger than expected number should be considered as negative for the US dollar. Now, if we look at the data here, the previous data for the month of September came in at 207,000, and we have a general consensus projecting 210,000. So it shows that there is a larger gap in that regard, which is not also a good signal as well. So we are going to be looking forward to what the actual data is going to be on this one. Then finally today, much more later in the day, we are going to be witnessing the publication of the monthly budget statement for the United States. And this is 
uh, summarizes the financial activities of federal entities, disbursing officers, and federal reserve banks. Now, a positive budget statement that receipts exceeds budgetary outlays is seen as bullish for the U.S. dollar. And on the other hand, a negative figure that is deficit indicates government debt and is seen as a bearish signal. Now, if we look at the data here for the previous month of August, it came in at $89 billion. And for this month, there is a consensus projecting a deficit of $78.6 billion, which is not something palatable for the US United States economy. So we're also going to be looking forward to what the data will be. But from the consensus here from the United States, it is quite clear that there is a sign of contraction um, going on here. But we will look forward to the actual data. And as technical traders, what we are going to be doing here is to see how we can position ourselves in such a way that we can capitalize on the next move by monitoring the price action on the chart. Now, talking about price action, the first asset we are going to be looking at this morning is going to be the U.S. all spot. Now, on the U.S. all spot, I'm still trying to load up my chart. I don't know why it's taking time. Okay, here we go. So, on the U.S. all spot, we, or if you remember, if you've been part of us since the beginning of the week, remember that we waited for about three days before we finally saw a traction in a particular direction on this asset. So let's run through how the week started and what led to the decisions we had as we had a sell position triggered during the New York session yesterday. Now, at the beginning of the week, it was more of a consolidation phase as we noticed that trading activity was confined within the price range between the $85.15 level and the $83.80 level to emphasize the level of indecision in the market during the first 48 to 60 hours of this week. And with this scenario here, you know how we do it in this community. We do want to be exercising patience, waiting for a significant signal, which of course will come either in the form of a breakout of the resistant line to give us an opportunity to buy or the breakdown of the support line to give us an opportunity to sell. Now, remember that we talked about how the $83.80 level had played a major role in negating all attempts by the sellers to break through the structure. And one of the things we said here yesterday is that if at any point in time price breaks down and retests the $83.80 level, we shall be joining a bearish move. And a couple of hours into the New York session yesterday, we noticed this happen. Even if you had missed out on the first breakdown, the market was so kind enough, came back, retested the structure, and we saw price move over 200 pips in the downward direction before this bullish traction began during the early hours of today. And for those who took advantage of this opportunity, I do hope that you moved your stop loss accordingly. Like we always say in this community, that whenever price action move very well in our favor, we do want to be securing our positions by moving our stop losses. And if you had done that at this point, you must have been taken out of your sell position with a considerable amount of profit on that one. So congratulations to everyone who were on standby to capitalize on this bearish momentum. So right now, I currently do not have any position running at this point. Now, as we get ready for the New York session today, what is going to be our plans? How do we intend to capitalize on the next move for today as we get into the later part of the week. Now, um, fundamentally, there are uh, a lot of development going on behind the scenes, which is affecting the um, the price of the U.S. oil. Recently, yesterday, we learned that in collaboration with regional and international partners, Saudi Arabia has expressed its commitment to preventing further escalations and maintaining market stability. Well, if these efforts are indeed upheld, 
we may see a positive shift in the near future. And in that regard, and with this um, uh, assurance from the uh, head of the OPEX Plus, we might likely begin to see some bullish traction. Now, let's look at things from a technical standpoint and what is really going on at this point in time. Now, let's scale up into the four hours time frame where I would love us to look at things from an holistic standpoint to see what is really going on in this market and how the current structure is likely going to be affecting our decisions for today's trading session now on the four hours time frame if you remember vividly we talked about this at the beginning of the week we emphasize how since the beginning of this month price has been finding lower highs and when we connected the series of lower highs, we were able to identify this descending trend line. Now, at the beginning of this week, we saw our price did break out of the descending trend line. And since the breakout, we had price confined within a range, giving us a consolidation phase. And you all know that from a technical standpoint, when price action breaks out, of a trend line such as this one we have here, we expect that some point in time price will come back to retest the trend line where the appearance of buy pressure is likely going to be inciting an uptrend continuation. Now let's look at what has been going on here in the last 20 to 24 hours. Now we saw that despite the strong impulsive bearish leg we saw here yesterday, we saw that as soon as price got into the trend line, we saw sharp rejections. We saw appearance of buy pressure resuming around that area, giving me the opinion that we might likely be seeing a retest of structure in anticipation of the uptrend continuation. And if we correlate this with the fundamental factors behind the scenes talking about the saudi arabia's assurance of market stability uh, we might be seeing some confidence resume back into the market to trigger more buy positions here now i just needed us to see what things are looking like on the higher time frame so that when i scale back down into the one hour time frame we will be on the same page now scaling back into the one hour time frame and considering the idea of a potential uptrend scenario let's see how we can capitalize on this move here now some of us will have bought around the 82 dollar 25 cent level around this area if you had bought there well done to you for capitalizing on that move but personally i missed out on that opportunity now what i'm going to be doing here for all of us who had missed out on this how many pips move that is right now that's about um, 85 pips which is not bad at all if you are taking advantage of that move i will be advising you to move your stop losses right now to break even secure this current position while we continue to monitor price action now, with the way things are going right now, I want to see, for me to join this uptrend situation, I want to see price action do some retracement back into this $82.25 level to retest the structure in anticipation of an uptrend. Now, if this happens, I want to be getting ready to join a bullish momentum now if it so happens that price does not drop down and instead it continues to find higher highs and higher lows then we have a level here at the 83 dollar 15 cent level which has played a major role in determining the direction of price action in the last 24 hours now what do i mean by that now if you look at this level this price level here you will see how market participants had reacted to the structure especially during the new york session yesterday we saw the breakdown of the structure here with an engulfing bearish candle we saw how price action came back to retest the structure where it became difficult for buyers to break out of that structure to push price to the downside so if i give a visual representation 
we have a breakdown we have a retest and price drop to the downside and right now in the last three to two hours now price is back into that structure and we have been noticing some sellers attempt again to push price to the downside so you can see how the 83 dollar 15 cent level has played a major role in the last 24 hours so how would x encourage us to exercise patience at this juncture to see how the market will be reacting to this level to decide what our next line of action will be so the 83 dollar 15 cent level is going to be play a major role today's um, in today's trading session now like i said earlier i'm looking forward to if selling pressure resumes i want to see price retrace back into the 82 dollar 25 cent level whereby pressure here will give me an opportunity to join the uptrend however if price breaks out of the 83 dollar 15 cent level then a retest of the structure will be all we need to join an uptrend move here now, for those who are taking advantage of a bullish momentum already, that is if you are profitable so far this week and you took advantage of this one, then you can just place a buy stop order above the $83.15 area. As you a breakout of this structure, you can afford to risk to leverage on the profit you have made so far to test waters around that area and see if it will work and if that move does not work then you know that you are just risking some of the profits you are you had made so far this week and you are not eating into your portfolio at all however if you are new then you want to wait for a breakout to happen retest of structure before you want to be jumping into a position so these are my views here on the US all spot and things are looking very bullish based on the technical um, explanation I have made so far. And there is one more thing I would like us to um, hold on to before I round it off on the US all spot this morning. Now, if you look at this impulsive move to the downside, you will see that price action appear to be transitioning into a reversal setup, which I think we can see a head and shoulder pattern, an inverse head and shoulder pattern, where this low here will be serving as the head. And if continuous selling pressure happens here, we might likely see a transition into the right shoulder where the $83.15 level will now serve as the neckline of that reversal pattern. And if this happens, a break out of the $83.15 level will be confirming that reversal pattern. And in fact, we have the privilege of maximizing the potential of this move as we have levels like the $83.30, the $84.35 area, the $85.50 level, and of course the $86 area where a breakout retest of the structure in the future will be welcoming more buy positions in this particular market. So I just hope that we be on standby with to capitalize on these trading opportunities. Now, in as much as we're looking out for buying opportunity, we always always consider selling options too as well. But from the way things are looking right now, as price still remains above that descending trend line, we identified on the four hours time frame. I'm not selling. I'm not seeing any selling opportunity here unless price will break back down that ascending trend line. That's sorry, the descending trend line here. That is, if price will break down this descending trend line to the downside, then I think we are back within the terrace territory. But I doubt if this will happen today. But if it does happen, let's be on standby below the descending trend line to join that opportunity so on the u.s all spot today i hold on to a bullish bias i look forward to either the price retest the structure to inside the uptrend or the breakout of the 83 dollar 15 cent level to capitalize on this situation uptrend situation here so you do want to be marking out these levels on your chart as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions for today and if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to let me know in the comment section so i will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds to see if there's going to be any questions while you also use that time to mark out these levels on your chart
I see your comment. I Muffy J. Good morning to you. Glad to have you around with us this morning. All right, all right. So in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page and my explanations are well are comprehensive enough for us to adopt ahead of today's trading session. If you still have questions, you can still drop them in the comment section. I'll make sure I check them from time to time. So in that note, let's dive right into the next asset on our watch list. So the next asset on our watch list for today is the US Tech 100, which is popularly known as the NASDAQ. And in fact, we have been doing very, very well on the US Tech 100 since the beginning of this week. As you will see here, we have been buying this asset and currently we have about one, two, three, four buy positions currently running on this asset. Now let's run through how the week started for us in this community and what led to the idea of us buying this asset. Now the first thing we observed on the one hour time frame of the US Tech 100 chart was the uh, consolidation phase of course we saw our price was confined within this range uh, between the 14,900 and the 14,810 level to for the 840 sorry to emphasize the uncertainty that gripped this market at the beginning of the week and of course you know how we use our flat channel whenever we spot them on our chat we do exercise patience and wait for either the breakdown of the support line to give us an opportunity to sell or the breakout of the resistant line to give us an opportunity to buy and with this in mind here we saw our price did broke out of the resistant line to trigger our first buy position for the week and remember on that same day we marked out levels such as the fifteen thousand dollar area where we said placing a buy stop order above that structure will be welcoming more buying opportunities we also added one more position at the fifteen thousand one hundred and finally yesterday we added another one at the fifteen thousand two fifty making us have a minimum of four positions running in profit right now and if you still have this buy positions running let's see how many pips in total this is running with right now so the first position here is running with about um, 400 pips over 400 pips in profit and we have the second buy position running with over 300 pips that's a total of 700 and then we have the third position running with over 200 pips and the last position here is currently running with about 74 75 pips in profit so we have approximately of a thousand pips running in profit in total on the us tech 100 so i want to take this as the us tech 100 as the most profitable asset amongst the peers an instrument we have been monitoring since the beginning of the week and for those who have been part of this profitable journey well done and kudos to you for being on standby to capitalize on this move now the next thing we want to be doing right now of course you know how we do it in this community as soon as price action moves significantly well in our favor we do want to be moving all our stop losses and secure the current buy position and from the way things are right now i will be suggesting that we give enough room remember that we are looking forward to some impactful economic features coming in from the united states today which is good is going to be affecting the volatility in this market so in that regard i will suggest that anywhere below the 15,250 seems most appropriate and remember that we do want to be giving enough room for price action to bridge just in case it wants to do some retracement before the uptrend continuation happens so with a well secured position at this juncture what is going to be our next 
line of action for today's trading session. How are we going to continue buying the US Tech 100 or are there chances that sellers could come in? Now, before we go into the details here, I would like us to run through the four hours time frame so we can have an holistic perspective into what is going on in this market. And for the sake of those who missed out on our earlier sessions, you can have you have the privilege of being on the same page with us today. So in that regard, we scale up into the higher time frame. I think we started our analysis on the four hours time frame where we were able to acknowledge the fact that price action has been bullish since the beginning of this year. And interesting enough, we have an ascending trend line to buttress the strength of the buyers after connecting the series of higher lows. Now, something interesting happened about three to four weeks ago. We saw price break down that ascending trend line for the first time this year. And as soon as price broke down the trend line, we saw it drop into that key level at the 14,550. Now, there is something significant about the structure which I emphasized on at the beginning of the week, we saw how this level had played a major role for buyers in this market. You will see that as soon as price gets into this level, the participants in this market deemed it fit that the US Tech 100 is cheap enough to buy. Now, we saw what happened here in the month of June where price broke out of that structure. And since the breakout happened, sellers have found it difficult to break through that level. We saw what happened here in the later part of June. Fast forward to August, we saw another buy pressure around this area. And even when we saw the breakdown of this ascending trend line with those engulfing bearish candle, we saw that despite the strength of the sellers at that point, sellers found it difficult to break through this area, resulting into a demand zone, triggering another buy opportunity that we have been enjoying since the beginning of this week. Now, there's one thing about the structure I would also like us to take into consideration. So if I zoom in right now, following the breakdown of that ascendant trend line, technically, we expect that some point in time price may come back, retest the trend line that was broken to incite a downtrend scenario. Now, with the way things are going right now in the last two days, you will see that price is gradually approaching that ascending trend line, which interestingly shares a beautiful confluence with that descending trend line we spotted here. Now, we are at a very crucial juncture in this market. We are depending on how price reacts to the zone along the descending trend line, and that 15,250 will be determining what our next line of action will be. So one of the things we look out for here is a breakout retest to welcome more buying opportunity. And if selling pressure persists here, we want to be joining a decline to the downside. Now, with the information we have here, let's scale down to the four hours time frame. Now, on the four hours time frame, we have this beautiful setup here. We have the trend line. Price just broke out of the resistant line of that descending channel let me highlight that for you so we can all be on the same page so we had the support line of this descending channel identified here a couple of weeks ago and we have the resistant line of that descending channel right here now at the beginning of this week we saw how price broke out of that resistant line with an engulfing bullish candle to emphasize the strength of the buyers here. And at this point in time, we hold on to a bullish buyers on this one. Now, scaling down into the one hour time frame, things become a little bit much more clearer. So since the beginning of this week, this is what we have been doing, buying this asset, and we have a couple of trend line as well, which has been supporting this momentum since the beginning of this week. In fact, we have a couple of them right now. We have the major trend line and we have the temporary one. So the major one is a thick one, thick dotted line on your screen, while the temporary one is the thin 
dotted line on your screen. Now, in addition to this trend line is the new resistant level I was able to spot here this morning at the 15,000. 320 area now if you look at the structure here in the last one two three four five hours sellers have continued to negate the attempt by the buyers to break out of that structure so we have a new resistant level that's the highest point price action has been for this week now the question going into the new york session is will price break out of this resistant line to signal more buying opportunities or are we going to see selling pressure persist below the structure to incite a situation where price will be breaking down that those ascending trend line well the structures here will be guiding us on what next to do. Now, with the situation we have here, remember we had the breakout of the 15,250 yesterday after multiple attempts by the sellers to negate the bullish attempt. And from a technical standpoint, when price breaks out of a structure, we are likely going to see price coming back to retest the structure, which lines up with one of these ascending trend lines to insight an uptrend move so if sellers persist below the 15,320 does it necessarily mean that we are going to be joining a sell position from there as price could retrace back into structure that was broken off to insight an uptrend move so if you are a scalper or a short-term trader and this sell pressure persists you might want to take advantage of this 70 to 80 pips opportunity before the uptrend move but as a long-term trader like me all we want to be doing here is to exercise patience and wait to see how the market will be reacting to the structure so if sell pressure persists drops to the downside we will be waiting to see how the market will react to that area around the 15,250 and the major ascending trend line which also lines up with that descending trend line that red one there to know if we are going to be joining an uptrend so if we notice double bottom structures around that area by pressure or the inability of sellers to break down that ascending trend line then we will be getting ready to buy however if price drops and breaks down the ascending trend line then i want to take this as the fact that we are back into the seller's territory and we want to be on standby to join the bearish move however if the contrary happens here and instead price breaks out of the 15,320 then we want to be joining an uptrend move. Now, for those who have been with me in this community for a while now, you know how we capitalize on breaks out of structures like this. There are two ways to which we can capitalize on them. The first one here is for those who have been profitable, who have been part of this profitable journey. So if you're already profitable on the US Tech 100, at this point, you can afford to leverage on the profit you had made so far this week and risk the breakout of the 15,320. So you can place a buy stop order above that structure. And if it doesn't work, then we know that we are only risking some of the profit we have, we've made so far and not risking our portfolio itself. However, if you are new with us and this is your first time taking a trade on the US Tech 100, then I'm going to be encouraging you to exercise patience and wait for confirmations before jumping into the buy position. So what we're going to be looking out for here is a breakout of structure. Scale down to your lower time frame, your 5, 10 or 15 minutes time frame to look out for retest of structure confirming that sellers are finding it difficult to break down and stay below the 15,320, then join an uptrend move. So this is how we are going to be managing our positions today on the US Tech 100. So basically, our center of focus for today's trading session is between the 15,320 and the 15,250, we are depending on where the breakout, the direction of the breakout comes in, will be determining where we will be going for today's trading session. So I do hope I made myself very clear. If I did it or you need me to do some clarifications, feel free to let me know. 
in the comment section. So I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds off to wait for your comments or your questions while you also use that time to mark out these levels on your chart. All right, all right. So in the absence of no questions, I want to take this as a confirmation that we are all on the same page. So in that regard, we shall be moving on to the next asset on our watch list. So the next asset on our watch list for today is the GBP USD, and in fact we are at a very crucial juncture in the market right now as price action is currently oscillating just right around our ascending trend line for the, for this week. Now before we go into the details here, I will first of all acknowledge the fact that we have about one, two, three, four four buy positions running in profit at this point in time and congratulations to everyone who are taking advantage of this move so we have roughly about 200 pips on all these multiple entries at this point now um at the beginning of the week we initially sold the gp usd remember after using this descending trend line here as a yardstick to guide our trading decisions and one of the things we agreed on monday is that um, as long as price remains below the descending trend line we feel comfortable in the sell positions remember we moved our stop losses locked in the position and as soon as we had the break out of that trend line at that point we had the bearish momentum negated welcoming buying opportunities in this market and since that moment we have been buying these assets since the beginning of the week and in the on, along the journey we had multiple entries we had um, we bought the first buy at the 1.2200 level we added more positions at the breakout of the 1.22360 we also added one more at the 1.2265 and we added one more at the 1.22 2300 area during yesterday's trading session and congrats to everyone who has been part of this profitable journey and the next thing you want to be doing right now is to secure all buy positions by moving your stop losses accordingly and for this fact we do want to be giving enough room so anywhere below the 1.22900 area and the 1.228 seems most appropriate to lock in positions on the GBP USD for today's trading session. Now, with a well secured position at this juncture, what is going to be our next line of action for today's trading session? Well, um, the UK economy appears to be rebounding at this point as we witnessed a growth of 0.2% in the month of August following a revised contraction of 0.6% previously uh, placed at a deficit of 0.5% in July. The release of the positive UK data has supported the GPUSD gain, in fact, in the last um, bit proud to this. And... Despite the weak factory data in the United Kingdom, I still maintain a bullish bias as long as 
the price remains above this ascending trend line that has been supporting our trading decision since the beginning of the week. However, there is some selling pressure evident around that psychological level at the 1.234 as you will be seeing here we saw what happened here during the new york session yesterday we saw selling pressure resume as soon as price got into that area and in the last four or five hours we saw that price was even unable to get close to that area so for me despite the holding on to the bullish buyers here it appears that buyers are beginning to lose that momentum they started this week with and this might likely incite a sell-off that could do some retracement into structure probably in anticipation of another uptrend situation here now look at the structure here let's go back to what we saw at the beginning of the week before identifying that ascending trend line that we've been using since um, Monday's trading session. Now, at the beginning of the week, we had this ascending trend line marked out as we saw a deviation from that ascending trend line happened on Monday. Now, if price will break down this ascending trend line here, which of course we've been using since the beginning of the week, we might likely see price do a retracement, which could be a reflection of profit taking activities as those who have bought the pound sterling at a cheap price at the beginning of the week may want to start considering a closing in some of their positions and this could reflect in a mini sell-off probably into this ascending trend line which we identified at the beginning of the week and depending on how price reacts to this ascending trend line in the future may incite the next line of action so if buy pressure resumes here then we want to be going uptrend continuation and if it breaks to the breaks to the downside then we could start considering selling but before that happens we want to be focusing on what is going on right here as price is right around that ascending trend line so let's zoom into structure now con considering this selling pressure here and we have a lower high already as you will see if you look at this closely you can see price was unable to break out of the previous high giving us signs that sellers are gradually gaining momentum behind the scenes and whenever we notice lower highs like this we want to be connecting it to have a trend line that we shall be using to guide our trading decisions so as long as price remains below the descending trend line the chances that sellers will push price to the downside will remain intact so i would like to give my bearish trend line a red color so i can differentiate it from the previous trend line so i will give this i will thicken this a little bit then go back to my candle chart and here we go so with the situation we have right now price still remains below the descending trend line now a breakdown of the 1.2300 level and the ascending trend line here retest of structure confirming that buyers are finding it difficult to climb back above that descending trend line that is the red descending trend line will be welcoming selling opportunities here and if the sell pressure persists and continues to the downside we have levels like the 1.22650 1.22360 and of course the 1.2200 area where we can add more position if price action goes on to break down and retest the structures now like i said when price gets into this ascending trend line here then at this point move all your stop losses wait to see how price reacts to the structure then that will decide what our next line of action will be so that is how we are going to be positioning ourselves for selling opportunities today during the new york session however if we are going to see price do the uptrend continuation here and this whole oscillation here turns out to be a buy pressure then i would like to see price take out the 1.234 which happens to be the highest point price action has been for this week and this is the same area we have been noticing selling pressure since the new york session yesterday so if a breakout of this structure happens we do want to be getting ready to 
had more position if we still have more buy positions running or join a new positions at the breakout of that level. So our center of focus for today is basically between the 1.234 and the 1.2300 area where depending on how price direction of the breakout will determine where our uh, direction would be for today's trading session. So these are my views on the GBP USD. I hope I made myself clear. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So as usual, I will be taking another 10 to 15 seconds to wait for your inquiries and questions, if you have any, before we jump into the last assets for today's trading session. All right, all right. So, um, in the absence of no questions, okay, I see your comment. A deal, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good morning to you. Thank you for checking in, Lasta. Good morning to you, Lasta. I see your comment. Glad to have you around with us this morning. So, in the absence of no questions, let's move right into the last asset for this week. So the last asset for this week and for today is my favorite, and that is the Hex AU USD, which is popularly known as the gold spot. And I will consider the gold spot as the second most profitable asset on our watch list as we currently have about one, two, three buy positions running with a total of over 500 pips in profit right now so it has been a tremendous week for us so far on this assets too as we have been buying and keep on adding more positions to maximize the potential of this bullish move now let's run through how the week started for us in this community and what led to the decisions we made on the xau usd now a quick recap of what really happened remember we spotted this um, reversal pattern right here or at the beginning of the week i think on friday last week we begin to notice this during our live session on friday of last week trading session now we all know that in the last couple of months the xausd has been on a strong nose dive as sellers continue to dictate the pace in the last couple of months into last week's trading session and as a result we have this um, bearish impulsive move all the way to the downside now despite the strong bearish momentum in this market something interesting happened during our uh, trading activities for last week trading session we saw that despite the strong bearish momentum sellers were unable to break through the 1815 area as we continue to see how buyers jumped in to negate all attempt by the sellers to break through that structure and as a result of this observation we were able to identify the 1815 stroke the 1810 zone as a temporary demand zone hereby giving us the potential of a reversal pattern now whenever we project a reversal pattern on our chart you know what we do next we mark out the neckline of that reversal pattern which interestingly lines up with the 1830 
level. Now, with this kind of situation here, we want to see the breakout of the neckline to validate that reversal pattern, which interestingly, at the beginning of this week, we saw this huge bullish gap. It's about $16 gap we saw here at the beginning of the week to further emphasize or reveal the tendency of trading activities during the weekend. Now, at the beginning of this week, we now saw that after the bullish gap price action went into a consolidation phase confined within the 1,855 and the 1,846 level during the first um, 18 to 20 hours of the week to emphasize the level of indecision at that point in time. And one of the things we said at the beginning of the week was to wait patiently for either the breakout or the breakdown retest of the support line to welcome trading opportunities. And as you saw what happened here, price broke out of the resistant line to trigger our first buy position for the week. And for those who missed out on that first buy position, we saw how kind the market was as it came back to retest the structure, as you can see here, to signal the second leg of the bullish momentum. And since that moment, we have been buying the Hex AU USD. Then we went on to maximize the potential of the bullish move. Remember, we also marked out levels such as the 1865 and also the 1874 area where we said a breakout of the structures will be welcoming more buying opportunities in this market. So in that regard, we currently have three buy positions running with roughly over 500 pips in profit at this point in time. And once again, well done and kudos to everyone who had been part of this profitable journey. Now, the next thing we are going to be doing right now is to ensure that we secure all our buy positions. And of course, you know what we do when price moves significantly well in our favor. Now, at this point, I will be suggesting that anywhere around the third entry here, that is below the $1,874.70 level and below the ascending trend line seems most appropriate to secure this current buy position as we look out for more buying opportunities here on the XAU USD. Now, um, with the way things are going right now, there are a lot of fundamental factors that are also guiding the direction, the trajectory of the gold price movement. And remember, we have um, we had the Fed meeting minute publication yesterday and the varied comment from the federal reserve officials regarding inflation risk and policy measures have compelled market participants to allocate capital towards the gold um, safe haven and amidst the escalation in the middle east and since the start of the week gold has displayed resilience reaching a weak eye above the 1875 and for me, I think this has instilled confidence in market participants, leading them to favor gold as an asset. Now, with the way things are going right now, I'm still holding on to a bullish bias on the XAUUSD and also taking into consideration the crisis going on in the Middle East as it makes it it makes quite a lot of sense to put your funds in save having assets such as the gold compared to putting it in a currency now from a technical standpoint how do we intend to capitalize on more trading opportunities on the xa usd how we for me i'm of the opinion that we'll continue to buy this asset today now what are the things we are going to be looking at well based on the structure there are two things two ways to which we can capitalize on an uptrend situation here. But the first thing I would like us to acknowledge is the uptrend situation going on right now, which is for the emphasize with this ascending trend line we spotted here yesterday after connecting the series of higher lows in this market. And this simply means that as long as price remains above this ascending trend line, we shall feel comfortable in our buy positions while we also look out for more 
buying opportunities in this market. Now, how do we capitalize on this? So let's zoom right in so that we can see things more clearly. Now we have a resistant level here at the $1,882.50 level, which happens to be the highest point price action has been for this week. And since price got to this level during the early hours of today, we have been noticing some selling pressure resume around that area. Now this begs the question, is this going to incite some retracement back into the ascending trend line which interestingly shares a confluence with the structure that was broken yesterday at the $1,874.70 level where if I begin to see buy pressure resumes around that area again I want to be part of an uptrend situation however if price breaks down that ascending trend line then this could incite some selling pressure to push price to the downside. Now, that is one scenario that we are looking at here. So if the selling pressure persists below the $1,882.50 level, then there are chances that price will drop into the $1,874 and the ascending trend line with the attempt of building up more momentum to incite an uptrend move. And if it breaks down, retest that structure, then we might be in for a sell-off, which I doubt will happen. But if it happens, we do want to be on standby to capitalize on that. Well, in the contrary, if instead price continues to find higher highs, then I'm going to be having a buy stop order above the $1,882.50 level to capitalize on the uptrend continuation now there are two ways to which you can capitalize on this for those who have been part of this um, community for a while now you know what i'm saying but if you are not i will run through this quickly now for those who are part of this profitable journey so far this week that is if you have been buying as we've been doing here then you will be in a considerable amount of profit right now Hence, you can afford to leverage on the profit you have made so far this week to test waters above the $1,882.50 level. So placing a buy stop order for you is easy enough as even if it doesn't work, we know that we are only risking some of the profit we had made. However, if you are new with us and this is your first time taking a position on the XAUSD, then I will encourage you to exercise patience and wait for confirmations to happen before jumping into that buy position. And to give a visual representation of what I mean here, I want us to see a breakout of structure happen first of all taking out all the sell positions there, then we need some liquidity to come in, which would reflect on the chart as a retest of structure and the inability of sellers to stay below that area will be all we need to incite the uptrend scenario. So let's keep this in mind while we are trying to position ourselves for the next move. Now, if break and breakdown retest could happen, we could see the retest drop back into the ascending trend line. It's a possibility too before the uptrend situation go on. But generally speaking, I'm of the opinion that the market sentiment is still looking very bullish and there's still quite enough room for more opportunities to the upside so these are my views here on the xau usd so i wouldn't be i will maintain a bullish bias and will not be considering selling unless that ascending trend line is broken to the downside retest structure before joining a bearish move so on this note i this is what i have to say here on the xau usd if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to let me know in the comment section so i will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds off waiting for your inquiries and questions and you can also use that time to mark out these levels on your chart as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions for today's new york session
All right, all right. So in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page. And it's on this note I will be rounding off for today's trading session. It has been a wonderful moment with you guys this morning as we took on four major assets today, which includes the U.S. All Spot, the U.S. Tech 100, popularly known as the Nasdaq. We also took on the GBP USD and finally the XAU USD, which is popularly known as the Gold Spot, and all of which um, this asset we were able to identify simple setups using um, simple parameters such as trend lines, key levels, and chart patterns to gain valuable insight needed to strategically position ourselves for today's trading session. And I'm very confident that if you allow the setup to mature before jumping into a position, we shall be coming back here tomorrow uh, um, on a positive note. For those who joined us for the first time, I do hope you are able to gain one or two things from what we discussed here this morning. And I encourage you to be part of the subsequent editions as um, the more time you spend with us, the better you get in understanding how our strategy works and eventually be able to use the information you gather in this community to make your own independent trading decisions. So once again, I wish you all the best of luck today. And in fact, I'm so excited, looking forward to seeing you same time tomorrow, 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time, as we come here again to review how well these assets have been doing and get ready for the last trading day of the week, which promises to be very, very exciting. So you don't want to miss out on that session. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, guys, and I wish you best of luck and do have a wonderful and beautiful evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>